What is up, YouTube? Back with another video. I know. Two videos in one day. That's how we're doing it today. But in this video, we're not going to be sipping, smoking, and reviewing any hot topics. We won't be discussing Jessica Brown, Gorilla Glue Girl. We will not even be reviewing a product today. On this video, what we are going to do is we are going to shoot the shit about foster care, placement, group homes, hospitals, residential. I know that there are a lot of guys, kids, teenagers, even adults that might have dealt with it in their teenage life, in their childhood or whatever. I know that there are a lot of things that you might have endured, went through, saw, had to escape, or even might have even wondered, even if you have never been in the foster care system, in placement, in group homes, in residentials, you might you may have never been in these places, but you may have questions about what it's actually like. You may even be a parent considering putting your disobedient child or your rambunctious child or your runaway child in one of these facilities. And you may have some questions. You're wondering if it's the best thing for you to do. You're wondering if it's going to be the best thing for your child. Me and my friend Brooke here are here to basically shoot any rumors, clarify anything that may have been misconstrued, as we were both in one or more of those places that I mentioned, that I named. So, before we get deep into this smoke, sip, and chat, we are going to do what we do every video. I am going to remind you to like, subscribe, comment down below. You tell me what you want the topic of one of my videos to be. Do you want it to be a sip, smoke, and review? A sip, smoke, and introduce? A sip, smoke, and chat? Whatever you choose. As I said in my previous video, no suggestion will be turned away. If it's something that you want, you have to put it out there. Ring that bell so you can be notified when new content is being uploaded. With that being out of the way, now let's talk about foster care and placements. I personally have been in foster care, group home, a residential, and a psych hospital. What about you? All right, so <laughs> they suck. Like, I, I don't want, I don't want any child or teenager out there thinking that running away or going to a group home, a placement, a residential, or any of those things is it. No, no. It is not it. It is You know what? Slide over a little bit because it seems like I have like more here together. Because we're not sharing the space equally. I think we are. Yeah. 
All right, so, okay, so that's better. That's better. See, look, now, look, you had said something about the last video, the light not being on you, right? Oh, it's so on you. I now see. I feel like it's on you, and I feel I like the light is better. Okay, so back to our conversation now that we're all hooked up. So, it is not lit. No. It is not something that you want to do if you can avoid it. Trust. You don't want to. It's just not. And it doesn't help. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't help. You don't get, you don't get any fundamentals. You don't learn new things except for how to fucking survive and maybe have to beat a bitch up for stealing your stuff. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So, yes. Okay. You will definitely learn some street morals or like some street values. When you're, yeah. when you end up in placement or when you like end up in foster care or in a group home, because, all right, so we're jumping all over the place. First of all, everybody understand that there is a difference when it comes to being in the system is branches to this, like being in the service is branches to this, like being yeah. in, like, you mm -hmm. don't just go take your ASVAB or go do basic training and then think that you can choose any branch of the service that you want. This is how the system is. Foster care, more than likely, uh, you know, like as far as that goes, when, when it comes to like believing the statistics and who foster parents take, and that is actually kind of something that you can believe because parents do like babies they do yes. like babies that they can mold yes. into their perfect children yes. families prefer babies they don't really want nobody coming in from this <laughs> because your struggle cannot add to their struggle right. you understand what i'm saying like you can't add a burden to their burden. They're not expecting you to be a burden. They are right. expecting you nine times out of 10. And this is probably something that they'll never tell you. If a parent or a person decides to become a foster parent, nine times out of 10, the woman is trying to get a baby to save her marriage. Mm -hmm. The family as a whole, the mother and the father are doing it for check. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't some good foster right. parents yeah, yeah. out there. Yeah. Like, there are some really good parents that, you know, adopt kids and do the foster parent thing because, you know, either they can't have kids right. or the kid's right. story may be, like, extremely emotional, extremely fucked up, extremely bad, and they feel like, you know, they can be better parents for them. But I'm sorry to say that is a very rare occasion. Yeah, that doesn't happen all the time. Normally, it's just for the sake of the That's what they call it. Like, they don't do what they're supposed to do with the money. Foster families, foster parents, get a lot of money. Don't let them confuse you. They get a clothing allowance. They get a living in its what is it? Living in expenses stipend. They get the check for being the foster parent on top of the welfare, the food stamps, and the cash benefits that they get. And the medical coverage. And they don't have to come out of pocket for that either. On top of because their clothing allowance is seasonal, yes. their living and expenses is monthly. Those checks add up, they are getting money for you mm -hmm. now. In mm -hmm. order, I say it here, in order for you to find some sort of worth in yourself, you have to want more than to be another check 
for somebody else. Keep in mind that your parents are already probably struggling to take care of you. So the funds that they are giving to this foster parent, they didn't want to give to your mom, to your mom right. and your dad. Right. They felt as though they could put you in another environment and pay this environment to structure you the way society wants you to be structured. Mm -hmm. But that's what the system says, but that's not what the system is. That's not what they do. They don't, they don't really know the structure of the system a good person or anything. Like and, and then you get a lot of families that the moment you turn 18, you out. They don't really care if you don't have anywhere to go. They don't care if you go look for your crackhead abusive mother, your druggy uh, sexual abusive daddy, your your lumped up pedophile uncle, your um, slapstick. I want to beat you with a fucking extension cord, auntie. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care if you go find these people. Once you turn eighteen, you are no longer a problem for that foster family. But as we said, there are families that love you for life. There are families that will take you in and go through everything with you. High school graduation. College graduation, marriage, pregnancy, announcement, gender reveal, baby shower, christening, baptismal, what whatever it is you choose. Right. There are, they are very rare. They are very rare. Very rare. They are very rare. Why <laughs> you said why one, why needle, one needle and four motherfuckers. Male. Please don't get it misconstrued either. Because not only females end up in foster care or placements or anything. But we will get back to that. Now, there, aside from foster care, then you have what we call the next branch of the system. The, the group home. Yeah. That is where you end up. <laughs> Everywhere. Sometimes. Now, this is a lot different. You, you know, let me just backtrack a little bit. A foster child is a lot different yeah. from an orphan. You become a foster child. You do not become an orphan. Right. An orphan is someone who, number one, doesn't know who their mother and their father right. is. That's number one. Number two, because you don't know who your mother and your father is, you have no ties to your family. So you have no grandma, no right. grandpa, no aunt, no right. uncle, no cousins, right. no nothing that you can look up because you don't know anything about you're yourself. Just you're just out there by yourself. It's a lot different from being, from being a foster child. A foster child, nine, yeah, nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, you know who your parents are. They, yeah. They don't, they're very shitty people. They have drug mm -hmm. problems. They're not taking care of you. Mm -hmm. They're not monitoring either you going to school or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And you have been taken out of your home and placed into another family. Your fucking family is still active and alive. You can find them. You can search them up. But an orphan does not have that option. Right. They don't know. They don't know. Yeah. So... Just wanted to clear that up. Just wanted to put that out there. Just wanted to throw that in there. That an orphan is very different from a foster child. Right. Now, back to the group home stage. So. Group home stage is when you are so much of a problem. They don't, nobody wants to know. They don't want to see. 
They don't know what to do with you. Mom don't want you. Dad don't want you. And then it's even bad if your mom and dad have split up and they're living in two different houses and your mom got a man and then your dad got a girlfriend. So now neither side wants you because you're a problem. Grandmom don't want to take you in because she afraid that you're going to be bringing boys and bitches all up and through the motherfucking house. So don't nobody in the family want you. But you don't quite need as much security as somebody who needs to go to as somebody who needs to not even just a foster home, but somebody that needs to be in maybe a placement, a sure. facility, sure. or residential. Sure. Sure. You have skied sure. through the cracks just enough sure. because at a group home you have yeah. leniency. Yeah. 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 You yeah. have leniency. Yeah. Stuff like that, but you are able to go out and make sure you need just as fast as you get them. Just as fast as you get them. But you do have them. You can do chores, get allowance. They yeah. take you on trips. They take you to the mall. They take you shopping. Yeah. On the weekend, you have a little bit more freedom when you don't have to go to school during the week. But, but, you are monitored. By a residential aide. Oh, yeah. You have a house mother. Oh, yeah. You have somebody who yeah. monitors and supervises you, your day to day, and everything that you do at night. Right. So it's not like you're alone. You have some supervision, but not that supervision that you would have if you were in a more secure facility right. like a residential right. or a psychiatric hospital. Right. The group home is a little bit yeah. more lean. Yeah. Now, residential facilities are the next step for the next branch of our system. Yeah. That is when they've given you that leniency. And you took it for granted. And you took it for granted. Or you think that you took it for granted. Because there's no way it's two sides to a fucking coin. You know what I mean? You ain't always wrong. You ain't always right, but even a, a broke clock is right. right. Sometimes. Twice a day. Yeah. Twice a day. Do not. You must know that you do not leave a room without a door being locked behind you. You get to travel the facility on your own. You get to be in a community room. You get to go in your room. You get to have arts and crafts. But you're a tad bit more limited on what you have access to. Right. Your forts and your spoons. Our place. Our place. Our place. Your, your shoe strings are taken from you. Exactly. You are losing yeah. your sense of self. And for you girl, yeah. you teenage girls that might have think you were grown because you you know your mom or your foster mom or whoever let you go get your nails done, so you get your, eye, you get your eyebrows done, you get all that stuff done. No, you're not getting all of that, baby. Yeah, There's no makeup. You'll be looking for things to create to make makeup out of, right. like your Kool-Aid <laughs> packet that they give you. And no, we're not talking about jail, but it is like you. Do what you, you gotta do. do. Do what you gotta do. do you you gotta make do. it work. You make it work. And then there's levels. So, like, if you make a certain level, then you know you're allowed to get something from the vending machine, or you're allowed to order yeah. out, so you don't have to eat what everybody else is eating. Um, you you get to stay up a little bit later, but 
you're still being monitored. And then you're you're being monitored a lot closely than you would be yeah. had you would have made it all the way through the group home. Right. Because sometimes people just not really going through this and never know what somebody's background is. That's true. Or you don't you never know what right? mm-hmm. Kids, I want to say me, because you know, like me going through it. Yes, I was a kinship kid as a child, but as a teenager, and I lost my mom, I was thrown into the system. But I was, I was already a teenager, and I like, fucking baby. So you know, that made it a little bit, you know, a little bit more rough. But you don't know what a person been through right before they came through that system. Now, don't think. Don't think, because we didn't we we didn't touch on this. Don't think that if you're a teenage mother, there's nowhere for you to go. There are group homes for specifically. pregnant mothers specifically, specifically for you home. guys, for you to be able to still go to school, for you guys to still be able yeah. to go to school. Oh, excuse me, she was paying. Sorry, we sorry. My man, who doesn't, for some odd reason, doesn't want to get involved in this. I don't know if he wants me to share his business, so I won't. I won't. I I won't mention his business. But we're not the only ones in this room that have experience as as they call us juvenile delinquents. Right. But yeah, that's know. not me. That's my. That's my brother. <laughs> that's my brother. She's talking about. <laughs> So, back to this. Um, so, yeah. So, that is where you are if you end up in a residential or in a facility. Right. Now, a psychiatric hospital. It's all of those things except for the, except for the leniency of the group home. It's all of those things rolled up into one you have you don't even have plastic knives you have no plastic knives they give you a spork because they don't want your plastic fork to be deep enough that you can jam it into somebody or yourself yourself. you get no shoe strings you get no scarves you're not allowed to have braids because those you can strangle yourself with them and And give you what is known as a PRN. For those of you who are not aware and have never experienced a PRN, it is an 18 hour knockout shot in your ass. While they have let you down in what they call four point restraint. Why do they call it four point restraint? Because your wrist. And your legs are strapped down. Strapped down. And, and they have yeah. stuck you in your ass with something that is going to make you sleep. So when you wake up, you're very you very to get your shit out of here. <laughs> You are given medication yeah. because they have diagnosed you. Yeah. Sometimes very wrongfully diagnosed you yeah. with yeah. with what I call a massive amount of mumbo jumbo. Yeah. Yeah. They call it, you have oppositional defiance disorder because you don't like authority figures. Motherfucker, I still don't like authority figures to this day. What have authority figures done to me? Fuck them. Mm. them. So, then they have the bipolar disorder because you can never stabilize, and stabilize your mood. They have a bunch of motherfuckers there, one. And I they know that ain't even the case for me. You have depression, then you have anxiety, and then, oh, they love telling you that you had a trauma that you're trying to repress. <laughs> so you're having these traumatic flashbacks. Caused by post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, that may be the case for a lot of people. But it's not for everybody. It's like not some, for us. Some kids are just angry. Like some, kids, some kids are just, they've been through enough. Like Listen. Like, let, me be the, let me be the first, the second, and the third to say. 
I am not repressed. I talk about the shit that I have been through very much so. Yes, no. Oh, definitely. Definitely. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, at the time you diagnosed me, I was not repressed. How do you think I ended up here? Because I told somebody. So I'm not repressed anymore. I'm not right. holding it in. It's not a secret anymore. Mm. I'm not crying in my pillow anymore. I'm not cutting myself mm. anymore in mm. the in in the privacy of my own bedroom with the mm. lights off under the fucking blanket, mm. listening to ever. So no, I'm not doing it. So no, I'm not repressed. Right, you just yeah, you just gotta it just. It's just it's a way to drown it out. You have to put black on top it's of black in order for it to feel better for you. And then... And, and you know what I said to people like that? How many tensions do you have? How many piercings do you have? How many sexual fucking partners have you had? Like, keep those things in mind. When you judge someone's story without knowing the facts. That's why, you know, as an, as an English major in college, I never take anything for face value. Right. Right. Just because what you put in front of me is what you want me to see, that's not really what this picture is saying. It's saying something different. And you put it in front of me because you want me to try to figure out exactly what it is it's saying. Like a lot of things, they, they exactly. It just like, makes them them. You know, It is what it is. Like, people don't know how deep and indebted this whole fucking system is when it comes to kids. Like, it's really messed up. Like, my fucking mom said this shit. The fucking fuck foster mom, the fucking worker, when they put me the fuck on the street, dropped me off outside. My foster mom ain't know me. She ain't know I had a son. She ain't know none of that shit. She looking at me and I'm looking at her. And the social worker. That bitch in the wind. So can't nobody ask her no fucking questions. Like they don't. And I'm doing these other people that can't. People with good hearts out here. I'm not going to say there's not. I'm just going to say I don't know. Right. I don't know. Right. 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 From, but from personal experience, right. we have not ran into right. them. We sure. don't know who they are. So heard. if you are wondering if whether or not you should take heed to anything that is being said in this video, I am going to explain to you why you should at least consider listening to what we have to say. Because it'll all make sense for me. I'm pretty sure. I was in the system. How do I know the differences between foster care, group home, residential, and psych hospital? Because I was in all of those facilities. I've been in all of those branches of the system that they call themselves protecting children. Right. Let me inform you of something. You took me out of one situation because you thought it was going to make me better. But you put me into another situation that's even worse than the first situation that I was in. Because at least in the first situation that I was in, I knew I knew them and I was being paid some type of attention. Yes, it was the wrong attention, but at least I was being paid some type of attention. And they were only calling me bitches for stupid reasons. But then the situation that you put me into, you have me in a situation where now not only am I a bitch, but I'm a nigger as well. Because now, not only am I an outcast for being a nerd in my family, now I'm an outcast for being a nerd, but I don't even get to 
demonstrate that I'm a nerd because now I'm just a nigger because I'm with a white family who could give three shits about. Listen, girl, let me tell you, nobody can convince me in any shape, way, or form that my foster father was not a member of the fucking KKK. Mm. Nobody can convince me of their fucking wise. Mm, okay? Now, with that being said, I had to wait for my DHS worker and my child advocate to even come do a wellness check in order for me to get the fuck away from it. Then I get away and you put me in a hospital. Man, I'm in the hospital. I'm in the hospital for six months. They've done diagnosed me with everything under the sun. I'm, I'm, I'm taking, listen, no, you, I'm taking medicine for everything. I'm taking medicine because I got dual personalities. I'm oppositionally defiant. I got anxiety. I'm depressed. I got bipolar disorder. I'm fucking manic. I'm, I'm so many different fucking things because now you take away my sense of identity. So now I'm tearing up your pillowcases and I'm making scarves because you took my scarves away. I'm finding things to cut myself. I'm I'm doing different shit. But it's not because I'm bipolar. It's because I'm fucking angry. <laughs> yeah. so that's an emotion too. I'm allowed to be there. When you motherfuckers just snatching me and doing whatever it is under the sun that you want to do with me, I have no say so. You know what I mean? Like, y'all look, I don't even have a voice at all. It, y'all not here, I'm, and I'm screaming this shit at y'all, and no one's listening because y'all know what's best for me because I'm the child, and you guys are the fucking adults, so you know what's best. You know what's best. And I'm supposed to just be like, okay, now. So what's best? So what's best for little old me after you do all of that? You send me to a motherfucking group home. Then after the fucking group home, you ship my ass out of the city to a residential facility. (laughs) Then, then you tell me. That because I'm a flight risk, that you're going to send me to this place until I turn 18. Then you're going to put my black ass on a plane and fly me to Texas until I turn 25. When you as a state will legally think I am capable of taking care of myself. What? What? They swear. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I, I ate some of the shit. No, got I ate some of it. I got now, 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 let me just say, let me just say, and I know she will vouch for what it is I'm about to say. And yeah, we're cracking a little bit of jokes, but what we are talking about. It wasn't about, funny at the time. Right, it wasn't mean? funny at the time. Like, it really was, was, it was not funny, funny at the time. time. It was like, very, very serious. It was not funny at all. We have to crack jokes because this is how we cope with what we've had to endure. Yes, I have tattoos. I have piercings. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? It is how I have learned how to control my pain. Because sometimes you can get consumed with your emotional pain that it does something to you physically. And I didn't want it to get there. But all jokes aside, yes, we are cracking jokes. But we are being very, very serious. Now, if by chance 
you find yourself out on that line where you got to decide or no, I'm sorry, where your decision has been taken from you and you end up in one of those branches of the system. If you play your cards right, it's not all bad. Right. No, it's not. It's not. It's not all bad. It's not. You will begin to find ways to maneuver and wriggle through the cracks. Right. You don't want to go you don't want to go. I have the same thing to go. You know, I'm not going to lie. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to say, like, oh, everything I do is wrong. But I'm not going to say everything we do is wrong either. Because I was wrong sometimes. You know what I mean? I was, I was wrong for about a year. I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say, you know what I'm going to say. Listen, I, I guess for me, I guess for me, you know, as they, you know, as they said, you know, I, I did start seeing some of the things that they were saying. So when I say that, I will say that, yes, I was oppositionally defiant. I was, especially because I felt like I didn't need to be in these places that I was at. I didn't need to be in these places. So I felt myself doing things that was against what maybe I was being told to do. But giving myself the benefit of the doubt, the things that some of these staff members were asking me to do were not things that they should have been asking me to do. So yes, I ran away from every place that I was at. Right down to the foster home. Soon as my child advocate and my DHS worker came to visit me and came to see me, I took that as my chance to leave and I left. I ended up in the hospital for six months, but it is fine. But, you know, it seemed like every place that I went, there was still some aspect of my past life that had seemed to be following me. Like, if the goal was to get me out of it, I wasn't expecting it to follow me. Right, right. So... Because I could have stayed with the Because I could have stayed with the Exactly. 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 Change the fucking destination. Like I said, y'all ain't Y'all ain't changed the situation. And it's definitely, and it's definitely like, let, let us also clear up and clarify that it's not always the problem child that ends up in one of these branches right. of the system. You do have cases right. where sexual abuse is a factor. Right. Drug abuse amongst the parents is a factor. Right. You, uh, uh, living situations right. are inadequate. Right. that was mine. Like, I wasn't a, I didn't get put away like yeah like i didn't mean like i didn't i didn't end up put away because i was a truant or i was delinquent or i was beating up my brothers and sisters right right that wasn't it that was not why i ended up in in any of those branches of the system i ended up in those branches of the system because i became a sexual object to people that i should not have been a sexual object to so this video is definitely, you know, for everybody out there, right. hearing parents, parents, parents alike. Like, so I mean? like, you know, and I then sometimes nature happens. So what you gotta understand is basically what we're saying is no matter for what reason you enter into one of these branches right. of the system. You will still be treated the same way. They will still treat you the same way because they automatically assume that the thing that brought you in there is the thing that brought everybody else in there because they're a problem. A lot of times they don't even share 
all the information with the places that they're going. Mm -hmm. So they left to like come up with their own, you know, their own idea of why you're here because they don't know. Like they don't, they don't, a lot of times they don't talk to each other. Like I said, I was doing this, not me on Sunday doing and drawing before. Yeah, my foster mom even got the up here to answer the room. Like, when my sister, when when DHS gave my sister custody of me, they did that shit over the phone. That's crazy. They did that shit over That's the phone. That's crazy because you, like, you know. She didn't know. She didn't know that I didn't have a bed at my sister's house, that I wasn't um, sleeping in a bedroom at my sister's house. That's crazy. I was sleeping on the couch, and whenever the DHS worker came, she cleaned up her front room like I was the one sleeping in her front room and she was sleeping on her couch in the living room. But that wasn't true. Yeah, they do. They gonna they gonna do they, they gonna do what they do them. because let me reiterate that money. Yeah. Them stipends that are given are yeah. beneficial only to That's true. the foster parent. That's true. They are not beneficial to you. Like, I ain't going to front them. My foster mom, she, when I got put in the foster home, like, that was my first go around. And she was, like, she bought me shit. Like, I ain't going to front. Like, she, I was dressed to the nines, hair always done. She let me smoke up my little cigarettes and shit on the balcony. Like, she was cool. And, it, but at the time, my mom had just died. Like, don't put me with this lady. I don't know her. Like, you telling me to fold my clothes. And I'm like, my mom told me to hang them in the closet. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I was defiant against her. And at first, she didn't do nothing wrong to me. You know what I mean? And I was going to stay, but get a little incident. She was going to select my one-year-old in the face and leave her handprint. And that's a no more. <laughs> we ain't doing that to my baby. Well, unfortunately for me, my neither one of my foster situations were good situations because in return, I ended up not only having to marry a foreigner that I had never seen and never met mm. for 24 hours so he could end up, you know, getting the paperwork that he needed to come over here. 24 hours, it was an all. Like I like I said, I had never seen him, never been in the same room with him, never been face to face with him. It was literally a phone call conversation. I got paid, the marriage was an all. But it was because of I wasn't being taken care of by my foster mother. Sister or not, I don't give a fuck. I wasn't being taken care of by my foster sister, so I had to find other ways to make money. So when I got the, so I ended up getting a job at AMC in the Shaman in 24 because my brother worked there and I ended up doing a better job than he did. But it'd be like that sometimes. Yeah. So, yes, not everybody ends up in one of these branches of the right. system for the same reason. Even though that is the case, you will still be treated the yeah. same way. And, and, and you have to know. You have to know that once you leave on your own, you are on your own. And not but you hire from them and you on the run yeah, exactly. until you become of legal age yeah. or whatever age they deem yeah. fit to see that you can take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then they say, oh, it's always this person that ends up in jail or it's this person or it's this person. No, it's people like us that don't know how to turn that foster care group home residential placement psychiatric hospital mentality all right so it's, always like, it's always going to be there yeah. but you gotta know how to turn it off 
And it's easier said than that, especially when you spend so many years in so much music. Like, especially as a kid, because they psychologically damn me. That shit be real. Like, it's not fake. It's not fake. Like, that shit is real. And, you know, it carries over into your adulthood. It carries over into the way you feel me. And it carries over yes. into the way you treat people. And the, the way, way you, you do everything. Me. It's the way like, you do everything. It really does. You're not living. You have time to stop do and shut the road. You can't do anything. Or enjoy this or enjoy this. You don't know. You don't know what enjoyment yeah. is. Somebody couldn't come up to you and ask you, like, damn, what did you do today to enjoy your day? You're going to say, oh, I looked at the wall. Right. That's enjoyment to you? No, that's not enjoyment to right. you. You don't want that. We didn't want that. Yeah. We didn't want yeah, that. Yeah, that's crazy. That's and crazy. that's why I said, you know, if you... You play your cards right, you know, you can you can weave through the cracks. I will say that we weave through the cracks because out. Yeah. So like we had different we had different I'm gonna say different morals on the streets or different morals on or well different we had different and I'm about to sound scientific. We had different conclusions right. on what people were and what people could do because of number one, our hypothesis in the beginning, because we had already thought people weren't shit right. from experience. Right. From experience. So then life was the huge experiment yeah. that we needed to prove. That people aren't shit. Yeah. Yeah. So our conclusion was justified right. that people really aren't shit. And I'm better off on my own. And I'm better off on like, my own. I'm just better off on my own. Like, yeah, shit gonna happen. And anything ain't gonna go So by. we had, you know, we had, we, we had some very great times. Yeah. Very great times yeah. to combat the many, 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 many dark right, times right. that we had to encounter. Right. But the point of it, we never wanted to end up in any branch of the system. Right. Well, not even the group. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, I was in history here since I was like my aunt took care of me. My mother didn't take care of me. So my aunt, so I call my mom, she took care of me. But that still was being like I ain't even know nothing about it. Still was different. You know what I mean? But once what happened in the middle, the system was in the middle. Like, and then you start to have experiences and it becomes a whole different. It becomes a whole totally different, different book. Like you might think you're in this book that you're used to, right. but you find that you've jumped into the middle of somebody else's book. Mm-hmm. You've jumped into the middle of somebody mm-hmm. else's book. You're you've been added on yeah. to somebody else's life. Yeah. It's no longer your yeah. life that you're living. It's not your story anymore. <laughs> somebody else. And it hurts you to think that you might not ever feel like that you can get back to yeah, your absolutely. story. Right. And it takes a long time. Like, it's, it takes you to grow out to just... Because then you start to feel like you don't want to continue your story. You want to fill in the missing gaps of your story now. So now you want to go back and be filled in on everything that you think you missed or everything that you feel like you need to catch up on. Or if you were talked about, if you were missed. Right, right. Now so you're, now you're, 
now you're dwelling right. and you're and you're doing what we like to call in um poetry you're scaffolding now so now you have these words but you have these blank spaces that you feel like you got to fill in with something that makes sense but it's never going to make sense to right. you because you weren't there right. when that page was written right, right. so it's, it's like that's like oh, that's like, that's basically just all the shit. That's just everything. Me. That's just everything. You know what I mean? That you're like, not going to be able to grip back or get back. It's going. It's going. Like it's going. And like no matter how much we might want to, you know, revisit and change the thing, you can't change the thing. You know what I mean? Like you can't make your roses and daffodils if it was thunderstorms and rain clouds and shit. Right. Like you can't exactly. change it. Like it's exactly. it what it is. is. You just don't know exactly. how to. You know, deal with it exactly. in a positive way, not a negative way. Because you can deal with it. It's easy to deal with it in a negative way. That's when we out here acting crazy. Yeah. You don't give a fuck. Like, like, the joke. like putting glue in our fucking oh, hair. Right. I'm right. sorry, because I said that I wasn't going to mention that's just like something that you but... should have done as a child, but you missed a childhood. Yeah, so yeah, but yeah. I had yeah. I mean, it was yeah, it was relevant to bring it up. Yeah. That is just, it's just yeah, crazy. No. But you can never get back to this. I guess you. It's, it's, it's done and over with. It's over. But we say all this to say this is for children that can't seem to quite get their minds right and think that if they are in one of these places in their life, it's, it's going better. to be better or you're yeah. going to get something better. It is not. For yeah, all of you parents, for all of you parents out there that think sending your child to one of these places is going to be better for them or better for you, please take heed to what we said in this video because the system life is not for a child. You gotta you gotta not to say that if they come down to it and you have to like you can't but literally, let that be your last yeah. resort. Yeah. Like, let it make make it, allow it to feel like to you, if you don't do this, right. then your very safety is in jeopardy. Right. You do right. not want your child to be Just to be like, oh, you being bad? Oh, you don't want to listen? I was in the first time to feel. Like, yeah, no, we don't. We don't want that. We, we don't, that's we not don't want that. We don't want that to true. happen. It takes a long time for a child to recover. It does. It does a it lot does. of things to a child. It yeah. makes them feel abandoned. It makes them feel alone. It makes them feel afraid. It makes them scared. Insecure. It makes them tense. It makes them insecure. Yeah. It makes them unwilling to open up. It makes it's them so sometimes, yeah. if you watch Law and Order, you know, it also turns them into psycho fucking killers. You don't want that either. We want black people to stop killing black people. We want all people to stop killing people. So we do not want to continue to send our kids to these places. And I also have to emphasize this with everything in me. DHS, DICES, CPS, whatever you go by, where you are, stop taking kids from good parents right. and putting them in yeah. places yeah. that makes them worse off than they were. Yeah. We don't Help care. Yes, we right. don't care about them reach a quota. Right. We don't care about none of that. Please stop taking these kids from good parents. Right. And please watch the parents that y'all should be watching. Please watch the parents that you should be watching. Just last year, I just felt like I saw too many YouTube videos. Oh, yeah. I saw too many fucking babies. Girl. Babies was coming up missing in trash bags. And the parents was killing them. The boyfriends was killing them. The stepdads was killing them. Listen, motherfuckers. <laughs> Sorry, you motherfuckers. Yeah. 
Stop it. Man, that's crazy. Stop it. A lot. A lot. A lot. But knowing what I know about the system, is that child better off with their father in heaven than being in this crappy fucking soapbox that we call Child Protective Services? They are not the child <laughs> children services. services. No, they're line our pockets services. Mm -hmm. That's what the fuck they are. Mm -hmm. Yup, they get it. It's like a, it's like a fucking commission. It's like a fucking commission. Okay, we just put. We just put the Wilson kids with Mr. Johnson and his family. You see that movie? I care a lot. Listen, I listen, listen, they listen. That shit with him. Listen. For real, because the way they doing it and the way they just so nice and lie about it, and they just like, oh, we don't know what the fuck they doing. Oh, we don't know what the fuck they doing. So many children and so many people and so many little time. And, all right, I understand it, but for the ones that show up. You know what I mean? Okay, because maybe I'm not going to say. It's not. There are a lot of children that need to be saved. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm not saying y'all not yes. overworked and y'all overstressed. But if that's the case and you feel like you're too overworked or you're too overstressed, find another fucking job. Because we need to, for you to be at your 100% game, not tired and broken down and can't take another case. We need to. And you be stressed out. You know, you got to make mistakes and you try to forgive them like that. Because you know what? So I've been here since 7.30 in the morning. Yeah. It's almost 9 o'clock at night. You know what I'm saying? And it's like that one time that you decide that you decide that you want to push it off until yeah. the beginning of the next week. Yeah. That that child is no longer with us because yeah. that child didn't make it through the weekend. Yeah. Or that teenager. Got so fed up that they just that they went in their room and they took themselves yeah, out. And they, and they or that little girl, that teenage girl, just couldn't deal with it no motherfucking more. So she went out and tried to find love on her fucking own, and it turned out bad for her. Right, right. Like I'm just like I and I get on you. Like I'm just saying, like you know what's too much for you. You know when you get to the point where you know you can't take no more when it's just too much. Find another job. Like don't stay in that position where you're dealing with kids. And guys, 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 guys. I'm not completely aware if everyone knows of the safe haven laws. You know. You can drop your newborn baby off at a fire station, police station, hospital, no questions asked, before the child becomes a problem where you're killing them, you're sending them off to one of these branches of the system. Like, you have options. But then again, on a brighter note, for all you uh, weirdo mothers out there, if you ever feel like you know you can't be a mother, you you have two other options. Two other options. I won't put them out there because I'm sure you know what they are. Right. I'm sure right. You know they are. So I don't have to say them out loud. Right. But don't do that to the child. Yeah. It's not fair. <laughs> it's not, it's not fair. And I know, I know that when you were a child, somebody said that to your mother about you. 
and it's just an ongoing cycle. Mm-hmm. But you, at some point, have to realize right. the cycle has to be broken. You have to break this. Like, you have to break it. And it's hard. Like, generational curses and all that shit. I believe in all that shit. Like, that shit is real to me, and it's hard to break the cycle. But you have to be, but you, you have know, to be willing to put in the effort. Or it will, it will continue. It will just go yes. like, like a hamster wheel. Yes. You know what I mean? You don't get shit off a of hamster wheel, but dizzy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it ain't, you ain't yeah. going nowhere. So you have to try your best. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy because it ain't going to be easy. You know what I mean? Like, it's shit that, that's all you see. That's all you know. That's, you know what I mean? You got to, I don't know. Don't let one of those branches of the system be your option. Parents, Please exhaust all possibilities right, first. first. Please exhaust all possibilities right, first. Right. And then make sure that there isn't like a mentor, a relative, or maybe even a teacher that your child might feel better reaching out to. Mm-hmm. Make sure. That one of those branches of the system is your last resort. Right. Because when I was younger in school, I had an NCA. I was in like the fourth grade. She was an NCA. She worked at the school. Love me. I used to go to her house. Mine was my one. Mine was my counselor, Miss Tony. You know what I'm saying? I fucking loved her. I, I, she used to come I fucking loved home. her. I fucking loved her. Like I fucking like, it's loved people, her. it's good people out here there to help you. You know what I mean? Like it, it definitely is because it's bad people, but it's also good, good people. people too. It's people that care right. about people and, and kids. Yeah, kids. Please don't let this be your course of life. Right. Because you think your life is going to be better. Right. Or because you think it's going to give you a story to tell. This is not a pleasant story to yeah. tell. This is not a hearty conversation to want to have right. to millions of kids across America right. if the video even makes it that far. Like, it's not even, it's not, like, you don't run away because your mom took your game. Yeah, you, you think don't she's do big that. Don't, don't run away because your Something mom, like that, like, because your mom or your dad won't let you date the boy up the street right. or date the right. kid because right. your, your dad won't won't let your girlfriend spend a night or right. because, or because don't and kids don't don't be that child that's fighting with something and because you're fighting with something it's making you act out and it's giving your parents the impression that you no longer want to be with them right. that you want to be in one of these branches of the system don't be fighting with your sexuality alone if that's something that you're fighting with don't be fighting with drugs alone if that's something that you're fighting with don't be fighting with a hidden pregnancy if that's something that you're fighting with right. like don't fight alone no fight is worth Fighting alone and ending up in a foster home, right. a group home, a residential, right. a placement, a psychiatric hospital. None of it is worth it. It's really None of like, it is worth it. Yeah, yes. You're being a child abuse, not because they you make it a child to be talking. Yeah, you being like, starved. You're being right. starved. You don't have clean clothes. Right. Your uncle lives with you and he's molesting you or he's raping you right. or you're 12 years old and you're pregnant by uh uh okay. your dad and you don't know how to talk about it. Right. Like let there be right. justification right. for this to happen. You will. It will be not only the worst thing you could do for your child's life, but it'll also be the worst thing that you could do for your life. And then, mothers, if you have fathers that is willing to take on the responsibility 
of these children when right. you feel like they are too much for you before you send them to one of those branches of the system send them to their father yeah. and yeah. and fathers same for you guys because yeah. if you're sole proprietor for your child and your child is defiant, disobedient, you think maybe anorexic, bulimic, doing drugs, having sex, whatever it is, if it's too much for you, then maybe now it's time for mom to be a mom. If she can. If she can. If she can. And allow her to do it. Mm -hmm. And allow her to do it. Mm -hmm. The system is not just fucked up for black men it's not just the judicial system right. sometimes these men that lead these lives of crime it was paved for them because they ended up in a foster home that was shit mm -hmm. because they ended up in a group home that was shit right. because they ended up in a residential facility that was shit because they ended up in a psychiatric hospital that was shit it could have been mm -hmm. prevented had the natural recourse would have been deterred. Mm -hmm. But we just felt like we needed to drop some knowledge on the system known as Child Protective Services. So you guys can feel free to watch this video again. You can watch it from the beginning, please. I definitely, definitely urge if you don't watch any of my other videos, if you don't share any of my other videos or comment on any of my other videos, please share this video. Not enough people out there, children, parents, adults, grown-ups, foster parents, people that are running these group homes and these hospitals and everything, and even... And, Listen, even these nursing homes, I, I I need for you, for you parents or for you kids of parents that are grown around my age or older, because yes, it happens to kids and it happens to old people. Old people are not exempt from these things. So when you place them in the nursing homes, please know that they're only called nursing homes, just like group homes are called group homes. And residentials are called residential. Right. They are not beneficial to the old people. I'm going to need you guys to open up your minds. But please, share this video. Watch this video. Like this video. Comment on this video. On this specific video, please tell me what you think. Do you know somebody that has been in a branch of Child Protective Services or whatever it is called? Oh, yeah. Or have you yourself or been a victim? And you want to talk about it or something in the video, we didn't explain something in the video right. and you have a question that we didn't touch on, please like this video, share this video, comment on this video, hit that bell so you can get notifications for when new content is being uploaded. And as always, I actually appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video because I felt like this was important. I felt like that this was a sip smoke and chat that needed to happen it needed to be available for people that may be confused about the branches of the system and it what confusing. it gets very confusing it's i'm very sure confusing. of it I, you know there's always somebody asking or i overhear somebody asking well what's the difference between a foster home and a group home or a residential and a psych hospital or a crazy hospital there are tons of differences there are tons of differences I appreciate you guys listening to this. If you know anybody that needs to talk to anybody, there are drug and alcohol abuse hotlines. There are suicide hotlines. There are domestic violence hotlines. There are all types of hotlines people can reach out to. There's even like a great hand for kids up to 19 that'll get you home if you're a runaway. So, so the resources are out there. I just yeah. ask that you use them. Consider all your options before you do what you're about to do. And I'll see you next video.